hard to get up every day and keep going. The bullet um, hit me in the neck and just hit straight into the spinal column. The next one bounced off the side of my helmet, ricocheted off, which would have killed me straight away. I mean, basically I've lost all movement and all sense of feeling and touch. Everything we just talked about, like why I joined the Marines, why I was doing all this in the first place, all of it in one fell swoop, gone. It's hard to get up every day and keep going. There's just a big part of me that wants to just give up. I think you have to really believe in what you're doing um, and think of the greater good. Yeah, you just learn to live with it, but it never really leaves you. What could you do to fill that <laughs> void? Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, Toby, to uh, the Adversities to Asset podcast, which couldn't be any more fitting because I've actually heard you use the words adversity. Um, perfect. Uh, person to come and share uh, your journey with us today. And I was just talking before, quite selective of the people I have on this podcast because I want those real stories of people that have really been able to turn the worst things that have ever happened to them um, into uh, something that can help other people. And, you know, it's just few and far between um, that you find people that can really live by that. So it's going to be difficult to give you an introduction, so I'm going to let you do that yourself. But first oh, of all, just okay. but go on. Well, actually, give, give us a little introduction if you can. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we were saying before, where do you start? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll do it in a, yeah, because yeah, I'll ramble on otherwise. Um, so I was born in South Africa originally. Yeah. Um, grew up there. Uh, really unstable family life. Mm -hmm. And I uh, ended up moving around a lot as a kid. A single mom um, who drank a lot um, and ended up, yeah, moving to America, moving to the United Kingdom, moving back to South Africa. So no real stable platform, you know, um, that most kids would have. And then from there, it would just kind of, yeah, just ended up starting getting into some bad bad circles and got into a lot of bad stuff. Like you said, I've been to prison a few times. A um, lot of misdemeanors, a lot of drink driving, drugs, alcohol. Um, and really I just, yeah, um, was either gonna end up dead or in prison for the rest of my life. So I decided now this has to stop and I came over to, well, I came back to England and Joined the British Royal Marines, which, to be fair, I, I was just looking for an answer. If mm. I, was, I just needed to do something, I was like, if I don't, and it, <laughs> it was one of those things. You look at the British Royal Marines, and it's like you know these people who are amazing physical athletes, mentally robust, and um, just look like they had their life in control. Was that was that what kind of sold it to you? you I think so. The stability, I mean, I said, yeah, kind of that stability, but family, community, community, yeah. family, brotherhood, brotherhood. Mm. I'd say brotherhood's what the word there. Man. How did you first hear about it? Was it an advert? Was it radio? Was uh, it I was curious question. as the marketing yeah, yeah. of it. You um, know? They have quite a good um, marketing campaign out in South Africa because South Africans, believe it or not, make quite good soldiers, and um, I think I'd heard about. I think it was, if I'm not, yeah, it was a couple of guys in a bar. I just heard them over talking and went up to them and started chatting to them. And that's really where where that journey began. Mm. And then, yeah, after that, did all that. Uh, we'll come on to that a bit later, I suppose. But yeah. To, yeah, from there, turned out I was actually really good. Did really well, very successful. Well, let's, slow down a little, let's, let's slow down a little bit there because okay. it turns out it was really good. I do that sometimes and people tell me after that, hold on a minute. Let's just, so because what made you really good? You know, tell us a bit more about that. I, I always like it when people blow their trumpet and, you know, sh <sighs> share a little bit about their skills. It can be difficult, but it's it's great for people to hear and really learn about that backstory. Yeah, it's difficult. Because um, I, I was watching your interview with, um, I think it was this morning, Mm -hmm. And they said at one point, you were one of the best I might not say it's soldiers, soldiers, is that the right terminology, uh, that that we had? And you went, apparently, <laughs> you know, kind of. So I'm just curious, um, 
first of all, to see, to learn what, you know, made you that mm. amazing mm. It's, it's, soldier, but also it, it, is there an element of um, <clears throat> resistance around accepting that, that, that gratification that people? Yeah, like I, I look back and I also ask myself this time and time again, what made me so successful in the military? And I think, you know, I was in a really bad place when I joined the Marines mm -hmm. and there was, there was this pain inside me that I, I don't know why it was there, it was just there, but um, I kind of almost wanted to punish myself. Mm. And so we're getting deep here, like proper deep. Yeah. Like the more suffering I could inflict on myself, like the more, the better I felt. And in what way were you yeah, doing that? Just, do you know what I mean? In what way were you thinking? Oh, just of physically punishing myself, like pushing myself to limits, you know, they would be like, right, you know, in the Marines, they would always, in training and stuff like that, they'd be like, right, you know, I don't know, it's a, it's a physical session or whatever it is, and I would have to push myself way beyond everyone else, but to a point where it was actually probably not healthy. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of that was there. Why I was there was, yeah, there was a part of me that wanted to, wanted to suffer. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, like a cleansing I do. I do. or something. It was yeah. like, it, yeah, it was, it was like a cleansing um, for all the, all the bad shit I'd done in the past. You know, mm -hmm. I really wanted to turn my life around. I wanted to prove to myself I had what it takes to be a good person and that I wasn't just a waste of space. So mm -hmm. I had this incredible drive. And I think that's what took me far beyond the average Marine who was right. there, you know. Um, and I think that's... And that's to, sorry, oh. just to touch on that, the guys that did well came from similar backgrounds. Yeah. And I always wonder, I think they they were on similar paths in their mind. Yeah. You know, this, this incredible push and drive to show that they're not just a waste. Yeah. You know, they yeah. come from some bad backgrounds and... I think that's what it was that really made me excel in the Marines. Yeah. No, I, and I almost most people that I think about when I think they're incredibly successful, there are every now and again people that are just naturally born talented, right? Of course, of course. But for the large yeah. part, it's usually the hard workers, you know, it's the ones that have just put in yeah. the, the graft and work harder than everybody else. Yeah. yeah um, right. And, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting. Uh, there's something I quote in pretty much every podcast because it's just so prominent in my life. And if people must, if people regularly listen to this podcast, they must think Lewis changed the tune a lot. <laughs> Fuck's sake, have you got any other lines? But it, it just seems to come up all the time. Um, and for, for the people that are watching this podcast for the first time, I, I like to bring it back up because it is, you know, it can be a really powerful shift because it was for me. So I don't know if you've heard of Dr. John D. Martini. I haven't. No. Okay, he's like personal development expert. I've been doing it a long, long time. And um, he introduced me to the concept voids create values. So if there's something that you don't have when you're growing up, you create an opposing value to try and fill that void and it becomes like a compelling drive. Okay. Um, okay. So if there's this element of you didn't really feel like you was, you know, living to your potential, you didn't really feel like you um, was doing much of your life, it can create this void. And mm -hmm. you had this pain that you said, you know, this pain within yourself. Yeah. That's the void. And then what the void creates is a value. I now value the opposing, mm -hmm. the opposing power, which is strength or significance or whatever it was. Um, and that's what pulls people forward. So what, 100%. So, yeah, so, so what would sense. your, what would your value be if you, if, if that, if your void was say, what would you avoid and what would your value be if you, if you could think about it? Straight away, I, I'm pretty sure I know what, what that is. And that, I mean, it sounds like I've heard there's something similar about negative pressure. Mm -hmm. Negative pressure is almost like what you're saying. So that void. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I, I think growing up, I, I, I felt growing up that, no one gave a shit about me. Sorry, I don't even know if I'm allowed to swear on this. Podcast. No, of course you are. Yeah. 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 Um, no one gave a shit about me growing up. And I always felt like I didn't have family. I didn't have like a, a comfort blanket or any of that. So that, that's what I was missing, right? 
going into the Marines, um, maybe without even knowing it, I wanted to be able to give that back to somebody, you know, um, mm. be able to protect people, to be able to be that force for good that could help, you know, other people just in general. Gotcha. Uh, uh, do you know what I mean? So, so like, if you was to go a layer deeper then, so if the, if the, if the value is to protect and the, the, with the opposing uh, void... Did you, did you feel like you was vulnerable, maybe? Yeah, yeah, as a kid. Yeah. Uh, I was super, super felt vulnerable. Like my entire childhood, growing up, everything. I mean, I, I moved around a lot. Like I never had that, I remember just never having that feeling of this is where I belong and, you know, that comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, then joining the Marines, I just had this urge to, to yeah, like you say, I think I wanted to give that back and be be uh, just be that stronger figure who can mm. protect and help nurture others and and when they can do it for themselves because ultimately that's what I needed as a kid yeah you know and I just didn't have that yeah um, and it it affected me massively so I think that's that's my answer to your question you know mm. is I want to help and protect yeah. and be a force for good to to others who can protect themselves maybe you know. And was you also looking to protect yourself and give yourself those things that you always wanted well, as well? I think, yeah, I wanted that brotherhood. I wanted people who'd have my back and that sense of camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Marines is a perfect place for that. Yeah. Because those boys, yeah, it, it, it comes down to, yeah, they're going to have your back no matter what. Yeah. You, you know, they're going to literally take a bullet for you, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. that's something you will not find in everyday society. You just won't. Yeah. Um, and I loved it, I'll be honest. I finally found my place in the world. I was perfectly suited for it. Um, I enjoyed what I did. Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, I didn't want to do anything else. Um, so and how I furthered on my career because I wanted to, you know, keep going. I wanted to do better and do better things. So as you were climbing in your career, how was that filling you up inside? Was it, was, you... it was like a drug. Man. Yeah. It was like I couldn't get enough of it. I just couldn't get enough of it. And then the more success I got from it, and it, yeah, it just sort of spiraled. And I was like, what's next? What's the next challenge? What's the next yeah. challenge? Um, and, it was, yeah, it was that drive, that incredible force that was just pushing me on to limits way beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. And every time I was always surprised. I was always like, damn, I'm actually pretty good at this. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is, yeah, that that is incredibly addictive. Yeah. It gave me that dopamine hit. Yeah, there's a few things there. One that I can definitely relate to, and if you can, is kind of feeling powerless and then feeling powerful. Um, I don't know if you connect to yeah, that. Yeah. You know, it's a big, big switch, you know. It's huge. And once you do feel powerful, of course, you know, a lot comes yeah, with that, the yeah. confidence. Confidence was so high. Um, yeah, it was unbelievable. It's probably, and, and I've, I've done my fair share of drugs. I know what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, that dopamine hit of confidence, of pure confidence of walking into a room and no one can touch you is like nothing else. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, there's certain drugs that'll give you a taste of that, but when it's for real and when it's real, you're just yeah. riding that high. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's a great feeling. Um, it's a really great feeling. And I mean, we'll come on to this in a minute, but I miss it. I miss it. Of course. Uh, so it, this is kind of the question you would usually ask at the end, but I, I kind of want to ask it now before we get into the story for everybody to hear, because I'm just curious to know, um, curious to know myself, what is your perception of the armed forces and <sighs> now, now looking back on it, having obviously had the ex- an, an experience that you probably didn't expect or maybe you I'm not sure, um, has it changed, you know, that you, when you were young and you were going into it and you're this powerful, this is, this is me. Yeah, yeah, and then looking yeah. back on it as a, as an older person, as a much, yeah, with a different, mature, different experience, different is, is there Absolutely. a different belief around it? Um, yeah. I mean, obviously as you grow older, you become more self-aware and you become more knowledgeable about things and you understand things better. 
when you're young and when I joined the Marines, I was 19. Um, and I guess you're still, you know, quite naive to the real mm. makings uh, of things. But but there were certain things I just wanted to gain from it. So I wasn't yeah. looking at the big, big stuff. Of course. But now, yeah, been through the mill and come out the other side. And obviously you had this terrible accident. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of time to reflect and look back at what the bigger picture and things like that. I don't think the military's changed much overall. Mm-hmm. Not, not necessarily the military, but how you see it, just because I can imagine this 19-year-old, I need to prove myself, puffing okay. my chest okay. up yeah, yeah. later on in life. Yeah. When you know, you know, for example, a successful yeah. business person, he makes yeah. his money and then goes, oh, it's not about the money, you know, or there's someone maybe in your situation might go, nah. it was about the confidence, but then later on you're like, actually, do you know what, it's more about love. I'm just wondering if you've had any epiphanies or, you know, paradigm shifts. Uh. Yeah, paradigm shifts. No, Mm -hmm. not really, I'll be honest. Um, When I joined the Marines, yeah, I was, well, we've talked about it. You know, I was looking for something and I I found that um, and I found my place. I think it's still what I I wanted to do with my life. Yeah, Yeah, that's amazing. I I I wouldn't change it. I would still go and do it. Yeah. It made me who I am today. So I I can't take anything away from that. Of course. You know, but... As a more mature person, I can see it now from a more adult perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like, yeah, you can see it as just this. It's just another organization. It's just another business machine, you know. Right. People come in the one end and they go through the, the meat grinder and they come out the yeah. other side. Do you know what I mean? That's interesting. So you, you see that perspective, but you're like, yeah, I'm okay with it. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's interesting it's, because. It's the same. same as every war that's ever gone. You know what I mean? And yeah. I've seen a lot of it and now I've seen other things and I've seen what's happening in the world today. And all it is is, yeah, war. the military is designed to entice young, affluent, testosterone-filled males. Just to, designed that way. And, yeah. and it's, yeah, young men dying, old men talking. Yeah. yeah that's just the way, that's just the way it is. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I I don't have any grudges against that. Yeah, you know, it gave me something that I needed at the mm. time. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm oh. really happy with it. Wow, and that's something that I you know still blows me away of every single story I've heard on my podcast and people that you know people like yourself that you know inspire other people. They don't regret yeah. anything they've done. Yeah, yeah, you can't look at the past. Like yeah. this sounds so cheesy and so. Cliche, in, yeah. Don't look back. You're not going that way. Look forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all before, so on and so forth. Yeah. But, um, there is some truth to it. There is some truth to it. Like, time only goes forward. You can't go back. But if you could, um, would you do anything differently? No, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. Um, and and uh, it's so hard to think like that. Um, sometimes, you know, oh, yeah, I wouldn't be paralyzed. What would I be doing now? Mm. And, you know, all the things I've lost. Maybe you'd still be feeling that pain. That exactly, you... exactly. You don't know which, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know which way life's going to go. All you can do is is deal with what's in front of you, deal yeah. with what's happened. Yeah. And and then, uh, yeah, you, you, you know, move with that. Yeah. Don't okay. dwell on it, just move with it, man. So people listening must be, that haven't heard your story, must be thinking, God, what, what is this story? So tell us, before we get into that, yeah. tell us tell us about the progression. So you, you started in the Marines, mm. uh, but I know that wasn't the, where you ended up. So no. how, how how did you level up in your career? Um, Was you selected? Did you apply? No, you, you um, so, okay, where do I start? Yeah, so after the Marines, um, on on a on one of my tours of Afghan, I um I bumped into a bunch of guys that were kind of passing through where I was stationed or based, and these guys were sort of casually dressed and and not didn't look military but did look military at the same time, okay. and I was quite inquisitive, um, so I started inquiring. You know, what's the, what are you guys? Mm. And they were very secretive about what what they were doing there. Anyway, long story short, I um, I figured out that they, they were these special forces operatives um, just working in our area where we were based. And 
I don't know, they just ooze this. You had an energy about this them. energy, yeah. yeah. And I was like, right. And and I got back off that and I started inquiring about it. And uh, yeah, people were saying, no, Tobes, you, you know, Special Forces, you're a bit young. You should probably do a few more, you know, tours, um, get a bit more experience under your belt. But um, I just, no, I was, I was, I was dead keen. So. Was you still addicted on that? I was, I was. Uh, power and that exactly. next trip, you know. And, and yeah, so I spoke to my sergeant major and um he kind of spoke to various others and before i knew it people were looking at me and going okay does he have the right attributes um and and, when, and sorry when you said tours what had you done up until this point what like afghan tours and okay. um things like that um because basically this was at the height of when afghan was kicking kicking off massively so they wanted what? me to do more more Operational tours, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, time in theatre, I don't know how else you'd call it. Um, just more real operational course, experience. Yeah. And, and for people like myself that are just completely alienated from that world because I've never been a part of it, I don't yeah, really understand. Yeah. What, what's involved? I mean, this is such a broad question. You're going to have to try and give me a summary. What's involved with a tour to Afghanistan? Like, what, what, what kind of operations uh, do you so, do? And what? I mean, it starts with so. Yeah, you, if you're in a commander unit that's being deployed, so you know you, you're being deployed, but you, you've got to go through pre-deployment training first. So that's like six months of preparing you to go into theatre. Um, so that's basically the first mm -hmm. step to it. And you'll have people who have just come back off a tour and will be training you and telling you what's you know what to expect, how how it's how it works out there. Um, but in, reg in regards to the actual combat side of things, like are you, you yeah. shooting at people? Yeah, well, um, the Marines is, you know, it's quite general green army stuff. So you're out there patrolling a lot. Um, a lot of it's show of force. So you're, you're really there to dominate ground. Um, it's no real specific tactical targeting of... Taliban commanders or, or um, going after what we'd call sort of VIPs um, or, or doing very pointy end of the sword stuff. A lot of it is quite a lot of, uh, yeah, like I say, just being there, show of force. Yeah, gotcha. You do come under fire and, and you are under constant bombardment from, you know, being shelling to, to other things, but it's it's a very different world to the special forces world. Um, and and you I, want and you wanted a bit more, did you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because I I'd seen these guys and what they were doing, and I'd seen what what we were doing as Marines and things like that. And of course, it's it's dangerous and it's very. Uh, um, yeah, you see a lot of horrible stuff, and it's. I guess, yeah. It's, it's still tough, but it's um, it's different. It's very, very different. Mm. Um, there's a lot of patrolling and a lot of um, just... Endurance pretty, and things, I well, guess. I mean, endurance is just pretty... It's just a lot of mundane stuff. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of sentry duty. You're on guard duty you're on these, you know, forward, out, forward operating bases or mm. FOBs as we call them and things like that. Um, and it's, it's tough, but it's, it's just long and... Monday. You wanted a bit more of the yeah, action. <laughs> yeah, I guess I wanted to <laughs> so what is it prove you, myself again. So, so I was like, yeah, okay, I need to, I need the next, I want to prove myself, you know. So, so what would, at the time, what constituted proving yourself? What was your dream kind of position? What is it you really wanted to get stuck into? Um, I think then at the time I wanted to, I wanted to become an SF operator. I wanted What's to that? Be like special, special forces, forces op operator. Yeah, special and forces operator. That's you, what I wanted to do. And is there is there a difference between like special forces, SAS, uh, yeah, yeah, there secret is. service? Um, I mean, there's quite a few of these no, there, secret things. Yeah, there? there is. Um, and I mean, I can only tell you really what's out there in the general public domain. Of course. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to go into it too heavily, but the stuff you can't find out. So, but yeah, there's different agencies. So... In the special forces realm, in terms of soldiers, you've got two regiments basically. You got the SAS and the SBS, and then 
there's some other special reconnaissance units um, and, and various others, intelligence gathering units. Um, and then you've got government agencies, which, you know, GCHQ, MI5, MI6, which is a whole different kettle of fish. Right. Um, is that more then, the strategic side of things? Yeah, than the intelligence front stuff, line. yeah. yeah. And, um, all that sneaky beaky, sneaky yeah. beaky stuff. Um, Cracking codes and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. James Bond <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, that sounds pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, that's that's generally, that's a generalisation. But for you, books, special you know? forces, what was the the appeal for <sighs> wanting to go? Other than that, I just want more. Special forces guys were like, they were the guys kicking in the doors, man. They were right. they were going after the high, high Taliban or, or high, anyone who's around the world, basically, anyone who's a, who's a threat um, and going after targets. Um, these are the guys who are doing, doing the job on the ground in the thick of it. Um, and that's where I wanted to be. I don't think I um, ever saw myself as being an intelligence gatherer or sitting behind a desk. I wanted to, you know, get involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, Did you still feel that pain that you felt at this point or was that kind of semi being fulfilled no it was being filled it yeah. really was and it was the happiest time of my life yeah honestly um i was doing what i was designed to do i was doing what i was good at yeah i i genuinely felt fulfilled yeah happy um this is yeah, kind of yeah. a kind of like um strange question to ask amongst everything but was there any thrill to kill in that scenario i mean i've always wondered that because you, you, no, you, you mentioned say, things no, like no, kicking not indoors a thrill, not a thrill to kill no definitely not a thrill to kill that's that sounds a bit barbaric or a bit psychopathic okay um there was nothing like that at all it was uh kind of wondering where that sort of escalation of power would it stops you know because there's like, i want to be yeah, on the front line yeah, i want to kick in the doors i want to shoot yeah, yeah yeah but where um, how does that where's the line get drawn there it's a very good question, you know. Um, I think you have to really believe in what you're doing um, and think of the greater good okay. in it's, what you're doing. Um, so it's more meeting an outcome than it is a pleasurable personal. Exactly, yeah. No, no, it's, it's nothing like that. Uh, people might think we're these um, sociopaths who, you know, and potentially there is some of that, but I think it was all, for me, it was all about the greater good and about wanting to, you know, keep the world safe and yeah i think sometimes there's bad people in the world and you need bad people to fight bad people mm. do you know what i mean you need people with a bit of a history to do these kind of jobs you ever heard the saying you can only fight fire with fire mm. you know kind of thing um so maybe there was a bit of that going on uh, uh, within other people or within yourself or within myself yeah and then, you know my um my colleagues um i guess yeah. you're a, i guess as a group as well you kind of absorb everybody else's beliefs as well and if there's other people that have different motives and you're you're a part of this unit i guess yeah, I it, think, you can't be so much of an independent mm, kind of no, viewpoint yeah. you have to be a you've got to be a collective yeah. to get the job done you're always going to have to be a collective and you've got to work together um regardless of your motives or whether you disagree on or agree or whatever or yeah whatever your reasons for being there are but um i mean we go back to me just wanting to uh, make a difference and i think yeah a lot of it was trying to fill that hole inside me and um i don't know yeah that's so i just kept kept going with it you know and i ended up doing a lot of really really good stuff um okay so amazing jobs and okay so hold on a minute really good stuff so what were these well, really good i mean things there's not much I, can, I mean there's not much i can say okay uh, just purely because i'm bound by right you know confidentiality and things like that but some good jobs some really good jobs um Did you get recognition for these things yes yeah. um and some of them no uh, it all depends, but yeah, I'm proud. I'm, pr I'm very proud of what I achieved and what I did, um, and the jobs that I was on and involved in. Um, it was, it was, um, fantastic. Yeah. So is there anything in between that and then 
obviously this terrible accident that occurred um, oh, in your journey that, that you can talk about. Well, in terms of ops, operational deployment, well, anything, really, anything like that. Anything in your journey that kind of led you up to that, you know, it's obviously a very significant moment in your life. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, passing, you know, getting selected to go for special forces and then actually passing selection and was was pretty surreal. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That, was, that was one of the top moments in my life. Yeah. Know, um, the amount of people that are that are able to accomplish that. This is, is is very very small. And what was it? What was it about you that enabled you to pass that criteria? I think it was the exact same thing that made me very good at what I, in the Marines. You know, it's exactly the same thing. Um, just that drive, that incessant drive to be the best I could be, and just trying to fill that that piece of me that was missing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just to prove to myself that, you know, I could do it and, and that it's worth something. Yeah. And, and again, for people like myself who are so inexperienced with even having friends and spoken yeah, about what yeah, goes on, yeah. um, but having watched another podcast with you, can you, without going into details of any operations, give us a little bit of a, a day in the life of some of the, you know, extreme scenarios that you might have been in within the special forces and... I mean, a day in the life. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of training involved um, and there's a lot of, you know, good, fun stuff. Um, and then there's the serious stuff, which is going on ops and having to perform at the highest, uh, well, how would you say, it? the highest uh, degree of, of skill and... Mm. and, and the highest degree of, of, of what you're capable of, mm. you know, you've got to be so good at what you do. It's yeah. Lives are at stake, I guess, but yeah. um, it's, it's um, a real special thing. I don't know how else to explain it. And not, if you don't mind me making an observation, an observation I, I get is that you've been so immersed in this life for so long now that it, it feels so normal. I think, um, that I think maybe you might assume that people know what you were doing out there. Uh, because yeah, I, yeah cause, look, cause look, there's, uh, I think um, I, am, I am being very cautious as to what I course, can say because it isn't, um, yeah, there's, I can get into a lot of trouble. But without um, mentioning names or locations, because yeah, I jobs, remember that on another podcast, for things. example, I think, but on, on a podcast that I watched, you were mentioning something about when it, one of your mates got shot. Oh, and, of course, yeah. And then yeah, you had to, you know, there was a joke yeah. about, all right, someone's got to carry him back now kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this is the kind of, I'd be interested I mean, to learn more about that kind okay. of. I see where you, yeah. That kind of, I don't know, what you were up to and also how you how you managed to adapt to being able to, that be norm. Because you, obviously. Well, I mean, you you always know it's a possibility. You know, yeah. it's always a possibility. It's either you or the man next to you. Do were you prepared to die going into these things? Uh, I think maybe deep down, but you don't you don't dwell on that sort of thing. Try, you know, I, I, hope, I mean? hope it won't and, actually and happen. Yeah, the training and, and the whole the whole thing is designed so that you don't think like that. I mean, if you right. thought like that all the time. You would never do any of the stuff we did. True. You wouldn't pass selection. You wouldn't pass half the training. You wouldn't pass so so many phases because yeah. you'd be like, oh, I could die. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you just you just don't. And it doesn't attract those kind of people. Because um, I've, got, I've got like a it's kind got of. like these. Yeah, so it does attract a certain type of person. Um, a bit of an adrenaline junkie, you know. Okay. Yeah, he's probably got a few screws loose. I'm not going to lie, but. Right, because I'm thinking maybe of a film I've watched or something and I'm kind of imagining some big army sergeant shouting at people, kind of brainwashing them into no, thinking you need to fight for your country no, and die no, for no, your country. No, 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 no there's, okay. none of that. there's none of that. Um, there might be some of that in the army and other regiments and things of sergeants and things, but when you get to this level, like you, you're treated as an adult True. and you're, you're dealing with people who are... 
right up at the top of the mm. table. Do you know what I mean? Plus, they want you to stay alive, I guess, because there won't be much use if you exactly, were, if you were yeah, dead. Yeah, and you're the res- the respect is automatically given there. There's no one shouting at you and telling you this and that. You know, no, uh, not in a disrespectful manner, but I kind of almost felt motivational and kind of brainwashing, kind of. You are, you have been selected to die for your country, and you must no, honor it and no, 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 sacrifice no. your life for the greater good. You know? Absolutely not. Maybe no. during the World War Two or something. Maybe that was happening. I think that was for the cause, and yeah, like because the, there was a lot more. Like probably the world was at stake. You know. True. Um, no, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. You don't have people sort of brainwashing you or telling you, you know this is your destiny and yeah, you know, this okay, kind of crap. Okay. No, it's not like that at all. You're a professional soldier. Interesting. So these you are know, the things it's, that it's unless you're career, in it, you don't know. It's a career know. path. And, yeah. um, your job's to stay alive, actually. Exactly. And you're there to, um, yeah, perform certain duties, but it's not all about just going after bad guys and, and all that sort of thing, you know, yeah. killing, killing bad guys. No, there's a lot more to it. There's, there's so much to it um, on so many levels, so it's quite difficult to explain. But um, can you tell me any like a, a, uh, yeah, a I mean, story like, in which where yeah, it got uh, like of really? Course, you know, there's there's different roles that we're involved in. You know, there's there's counterterrorism, there's surveillance, um, there's, um, I mean, there's even guys who are dealing with um, sort of chemical warfare and finding out things and. There's all these other different little things. We're not just uh, these robotic killers that go out there and just um, mm-hmm. are told go in there and just kill everyone. No, that's no, that's all just ma- movie stuff. Yeah, um, but people people have died in front of you. Yeah, a lot of people um, have died in front of me, including my friends. Um, and it's a risk. It's part of the job. How did, how did you take that the first time you experienced that? Um, shock is kind of what comes to mind. I remember just being like, it was so surreal. Um, uh, it was so surreal because I just, the one minute they're a living, talking human being, like, you know, and the next minute it's just off. True. Just yeah. off. You know what I mean? And... You kind of you you kind of your brain's trying to trying to get your head around it because you you're expecting them to just get back up. Yeah, you, or the next day maybe. Where yeah, are they? Not even that. Just in the moment, you're expecting them to just get back up, or like oh, oh you know, oh, I tripped over something or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, the reality is they're gone. They're gone. They're not there anymore. All that's left is that you know the the body, wow. um, and it's. It's such a heavy thing to process. It's such a heavy thing to process. Um, and it sticks with you forever. Like it okay, sticks okay. with you forever. Um, Is that the hardest part of everything? A bit, I put aside your I mean, accident. Psycholo- yeah, yeah, psychologically, it's, it's, it's very hard. Yeah, it's, you yeah, don't, it so is. you don't learn to adapt and get, get you, I mean. No, no, you don't. I mean, yeah. You, don't, you just learn to live with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just learn to live with it, but it never really leaves you. And like, you do find yourself floating back to those moments, but in general, you don't. You don't. Why would you? It's, you know, if anything, I, I the only time I do it is to pay respect. Yeah. You know, to, so they're not forgotten. to that moment. And yeah, and then try and think about prior to that, you know. Um, so, so when you say that off, that was just very interesting because I kind of know what you meant. Is that because it wasn't some crazy explosion or something? Was it just like a sniper through the head or something like that? Yeah. And it's just they just drop and then that, you're like, yeah, yeah. what the hell just happened there? Yeah, yeah. It happens in, well, I don't know how fast does a bullet travel. You yeah. know, it's just. Is your first thought? One minute's there and the next minute they're not. They're and then what, everyone drops on, to the floor. Yeah, and lying on the floor. And, and then, then you, you as well, I should imagine. Well, yeah, yeah, because. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> Generally, you can hear the crack, um, depending on how close they are. Um, and then it's, yeah, everyone hits the deck. Mm. But uh, 
every scenario is different. Every yeah, every op I've been on, it's, it's different. Sometimes you walk straight into a firefight, and other times you don't. Other times it's a bit gradual. Sometimes there's loads of in, um, you know enemy, and loads. Sometimes it's not. Mm. Um, sometimes it's not even that chaotic. Sometimes it's as simple as you know just go in and get someone. Yeah. Um, so. So when you say get someone, have you killed people? <sighs> That's a tough question. Um, I mean, no, I don't like to say um, whether I have or whether I have not. Um, it's not something Fair I like to talk about. Fair enough. Um, yeah, and it's not something, yeah, it's just not something I like to talk about or something I'm proud of or anything. So, I'd, yeah, it's just something I'd Fair leave enough. it to one side. That's, that's fine. I completely respect that. So let's go to the day. Um Unless there's anything else you want to share where obviously this uh, devastating, do you I mean, call it an accident? I've been shot before myself. Uh, right, okay, okay. Before, before, I've been, I mean, before my injury, um, but before I was shot in the neck. So I know what it's like to be shot, but still be conscious. Um, where were you shot that time? Through the shoulder. Okay. Um, and that was a sniper uh, on a job. Uh, things went a bit sideways and um, yeah we ended up deciding to finish the mission but at great high risk anyway I talk about it a little bit more in my book Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more in detail but basically as we were assaulting towards the the enemy target uh, I was shot straight through the arm shoulder and um yeah, <laughs> that was the first time. I think in my mil- military career, I think I really felt vulnerable. <laughs> I was going to say, know, did that knock um, your confidence? It did, but to be honest, I was in such, I was in like military mode. I was in the zone and, yeah. you know, I was psyched. I was in the zone and I knew I had, there was a job to be done. Um, so to be honest, I'd, I'd finished a job and we did what we had to do, and it was only after that when there was a bit of a, a bit of a quiet period. I was like, um, yeah, I nearly died. Look, yeah, I looked <laughs> down and I saw all this blood um, and claret everywhere, and I was like, oh shit, mm-hmm. oh shit, and that's when like that vulnerability kicks in, mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, yeah. What, that, what the that, fuck am I doing? I mean, yeah, like a couple of inches to the left, and I probably. I'd probably, I would be dead. Mm. I would be dead. Did you consider at that point, at any stage going, do you know what, I've done enough, I'm going to stop? No. Actually, no, I didn't think like that at all. Um, Because I should imagine the people that do get close calls and go, do you know what, I've had had my run now. Yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. A lot of people and a lot of people um, do exactly that. They go, yeah, I'm done. That's me. Um, I've done enough. Um, And I'm... the psychological pressure is just too much and they, they call it quits. What, what age but, were you at that point? Uh, 23. Okay. Um, in, in, in the, in, in the sort of services, what's the peak of age? A lot older than that. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a lot older than that. So I, I still had my whole career ahead of me. Um, yeah, I still had my whole career ahead of okay. me. But that was that was yeah that was quite a quite a significant moment in my life. Um, I always look yeah I do look back to that moment and yeah boy it that's that's a close. So one. how many ever, ever years passed before mm. you got to the? Not long actually, um, not long at all. And then I was shot again, except this time I was shot through the neck. And well, let's, let's slow down a little bit on this one then. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So, to run us through from start to finish because obviously this um, is significant. Yeah. So, again, this is a total different op, to- totally different target. And uh, basically, yeah, um, where do I start? Going after um, another high value target, and things just, things just got kinetic. Went very kinetic very quickly. And what does that mean? Like bullets started flying. Okay. Um, and I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't remember much because once the 
bullet hit me. That was lights. That was, for me, that was lights out. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That was that was me douche down. So I don't remember much and 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 that. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> You were shot in the neck. I mean, yeah, so so yeah. so what happened? I mean, what was the next thing you remember? Um, I mean, it was pretty, yeah, lights out at that point, and then the next thing I remember is just all kind of hazy confusion, disorientation. Uh, almost felt like I was in some other parallel world somewhere else. Um, was, it, was that due to drugs or was that yeah, due to... Yeah, it was yeah. due to, okay. you know, all these chemicals and induced dr uh, drugs to induce me into a coma and keep me sedated and yeah. things. Um, and, geez, I, I, yeah, it was a lot of confusion. Um, and then the next thing I know, I'm sort of waking up in hospital and I can't really make sense of anything and... Everything is all over the place and there's people staring at me in bright lights. And, mm. and When you say you couldn't make sense of anything, are you talking about the last couple of days or are you talking about your entire life at this point? Or? Do you know what? <clears throat> yeah, I actually thinking about it, I don't know if I could, yeah, make sense of anything. Mm. My life, um, who was there, who was real, who was not, was I asleep, was yeah. I awake, was I... Was I back on drugs? Was I, you yeah. know, what, what the hell is going on here? And who, you know, who are all these people? Because one minute I was thinking I was still back in, you know, back in Afghan. And then the next minute I'm thinking, hold on, but, you know, these are medical people. And mm. then I'm seeing family members or, or mates and I'm thinking, what is going on here? And how long had it passed know? between that? So that was, I think I was, so November, December, yeah, three three months. Well, you were sedated. For yeah, three yeah, yeah. I was, wow. Um, completely, because I was just going through operation, operation, trying to see if I was um, salvageable. Um, <laughs> to tell us a little bit about the so, um, physical injury that had occurred. Yeah, so the bullet um, hit me in the neck, um, left side, and just hit straight into the spinal column, and the spinal column is what. You know, your spine, that protects your spinal cord. And your cord wow. is, is the, you know, your central nervous system. That goes right up so to your brain. So that was a pretty good shot from the guy. Uh, no, it was pure fluke. It yeah. Was just luck. Just, luck of the jaw. Right, okay. Yeah, it was pitch black. And right, okay. And shit was going fucking haywire. Like bullets were flying everywhere. Um, it was chaos. And uh, just... Um, so in those scenarios, I, um, I just I just took a round through the neck. It was you, yeah, were you just it was uh, just a burst. Um, yeah, I came through the door with right. three of us. Three of us came through a door, and um, it was just a burst of rounds um, that just came in our direction. What happened to the other two? So the guy behind me was shot through the knee, through the leg. Um, the guy in front of me was okay, and I took predominantly most of the the burst. Um, the you the one that round. came through the yeah. door first. Sorry, was you the one that came through the door first? No, I was third. Third, we've got the biggest third. impact. That's uh... yeah, around there somewhere. Um, if I if I remember correctly, I was either second in the stack stack of blokes who came through who came through the door. Um, but yeah, the guy behind me took a round. If you think of like a burst of rounds, um, when someone fires an AK forty seven. Generally, the rounds just go straight up, so it's almost like a vertical line of rounds. And um, one went through his knee, the next one went through my neck. The next one bounced off the side of my helmet, ricocheted off, which would have killed me straight away. I mean, mm. um, yeah, that literally hit me in the temple, and that was lights out. Yeah, so so the round, yeah, obviously hit my spine, crushed everything, and. The bullet uh, broke up and sort of just came out the other side in a big mess on the right side of my neck, um, having travelled straight through the whole spine, um, which severed everything. Um, also severed the main so arteries. Kind of yeah, yeah, pretty much. A little bit further back. But, okay. um, yeah, pretty much. Because oh, yeah, yeah. I missed all, yeah, missed all my vocal cords and my, you know, swallowing and things. Yeah. Um, but this breathing 
Yeah. So, so, so well, yeah, it hit because it hit my spine. Now, if you sever your spinal cord, the amount of paralysis you get is all dependent on how high up the spinal cord is damaged. And yours was as high as it could be? No, no. Um, oh. uh, so my injury is C2, cervical, right. cervical um, bone C2. Okay. You know, oh, yeah, you know, I just would have thought the neck was, you know, pretty much... Yeah, yeah, that's no, no. High. So you got C one. Right. You've actually got C zero, which is literally where the where the spinal cord taps into the base of the skull. And what happens if that's damaged? Oh, they, yeah, you're dead. Um, right. Yeah, you, there's no coming back from that. I don't think you can break C zero um, or C one. I think then it's. I think maybe maybe you'd have locked in syndrome, but pretty much the brain might be alive, but. No, and is that at the point where your 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 organs can't function? No, because your organs function on a different nervous system. Right. It's very like I'm not a doctor. Don't get me wrong. Please yeah. don't like take all of this as gospel. This is just what I'm sure I've you've learned, learned quite a bit <laughs> over, over the years. Yeah. Um. So basically, I've lost all movement and all sense of feeling and touch. Um. So I can't feel anything or move anything. But. Uh, anything at all? Because well, your no, face, no, I can yeah. move my head. So anything so from, I can neck, move my head, but everything from neck below. From my neck down, yeah, I can't, nothing, nothing works. Um, was there any moment when you had any mobility? No. It was just gone from the start, no, the moment you start, woke up? Yeah, the moment I woke up, it was even worse. Um, I had to get a lot of it back because when I woke up, I couldn't speak, I couldn't swallow. Um, I went through a lot of recovery, recovery just to get the movement back in my neck. Because I was, you know, head brace and metal fixtures and all kinds of things holding me, holding my head literally on. I'd been through three surgical procedures where they tried to remove all the shrapnel. They mm. took bone from my hip to try and reconstruct my spine. Um, made they, they tried everything they, at the end of the book. Were they trying the to give you any mobility back or were they just trying to keep no, you alive? No, they are just trying to keep me alive. Yeah. Um, literally trying to keep me alive. They knew that no matter what, they'd already told everyone he will never ever walk again. It's now down to whether he is brain dead or not. Yeah. Because of the metal from the bullet, as I told you before, the bullet broke up into loads of different pieces. Um, mm. So they, and they couldn't get all of it out. So I was never able to do an MRI scan. And an MRI scan will tell you how much damage is done to the nervous system, to the brain on a very, very high level. You can't do that when there's metal. But you, can't do it. you can't do it with metal because MRIs are, are purely run on magnets. That's how they work. Um, and if you put me into an MRI scan, it would just literally rip that metal straight out of my neck. Jesus. The leftover shrapnel that they couldn't get. Now we're talking microscopic pieces of metal. And they would never take that risk mm. because one could kill me instant. The slightest movement in the wrong direction could kill me straight away. So they never knew how much damage was done to my brain because there was so much oxygen starvation, mm. blood loss and so on and so forth. So when they were waking me up, they were like, it's really a 50-50. It could be completely inert, brain dead. Um, well, can, can we – that – there must have been a bit more of a conversation because obviously you've you've woken up after three months, you, you're completely dazed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so what was the sequence of events that happened after that as you came came around? Someone must have explained to you what had happened and the, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was obviously delusional as hell. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I was on a big cocktail of drugs. Um, so I was actually reverting back to like combat mode. I thought I'd been captured and... You know, I was screaming at people and telling telling everyone to leave me alone and I'm not telling you shit and all that kind yeah. of stuff. I don't believe a thing that's going on Yeah, You know, you've sedated me on purpose and I can't move because, you you know, you've paralysed me and you've done this. And do, you, do you think that was due to the drugs or do you think that was like a better alternative uh, for your mind to try and cope with? Good question. Good question. Could be both. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I just didn't want to accept the fact because um, there were moments where they'd tell me what had happened and I would just slip back into a coma. So I don't think my brain could actually com comprehend or contemplate what had happened. I just literally, they'd be talking to me and my pupils would just dilate completely. 
Wow. And I'd be gone. And then the, the surgeon would be like, no, he's gone. What? He's what? gone back into his... Not Do you remember the time where, where you came to the realisation that, oh, no, I get it, this is Yeah, happening. eventually, you know, over time you start to process it and then it starts to dawn on you slowly, but surely it dawns on you and you're like, okay, okay. Um, but there's so many things going on in your mind. You're thinking, well, at least I'm still alive. Yeah. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. Maybe maybe I can get some feeling back. Maybe I'm, yeah. you know, maybe there'll be some miracle cure. Who there's knows? some hope there. Yeah, yeah. And you're thinking all these things, and then on the other hand, you're thinking, no, this is this is it now. How am I going to live? How am I going to cope? Um, and there's this like massive amounts of panic, which you know is like just streams of cortisol streaming around your body, um, but you can't move. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just just crazy. Um, going back to it all now, it like it, yeah, it really, f- it really fucked me up massively. Yeah, wow. Like really fucked me up. Um, something I don't think the human brain is supposed to have to cope with. No. Um, but yeah, yeah. And there was something that I was reading as well, and I think we missed that. Um, there was a time where the doctors. Uh, advised your family to turn off the life support machine and basically yeah, said uh, that yeah. it, it's, it's too far gone. Yeah, but well, if, but they gave them a 50-50 chance of me being, you know, awake or dead. It's probably worth uh, keeping you on then. I think that's quite yeah, a decent. Yeah. Sort of. yeah, something like that. And um, they were like, yeah, it's up to you guys. It's, it's literally down to you. You, you, you make the call. I'm glad they made that call with a 50-50. Yeah. I mean, if it was a 95-5, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and if I remember rightly, I don't know if I um, read this or watched this uh, correctly, but was you kind of under sedation but conscious when they were having those conversations? Did, did you know? Well, no, I was, I was totally, I was, you know, under, in a coma. But being in a coma, only people who have been in a coma are going to get this. It's like something's come through. Right. Some things don't. Like sometimes you're in dreamland. It's like being in the deepest sleep you've ever been in. Yeah. Um, the, you can't keep track of time or of course, anything. Yeah. And you're moving from like memory to memory to vision to vision. You're, you're sort of just floating around um, in this black void. Is it, um, is it a horrible, painful place to be or is it kind of a no, blissful? No, it's not painful. It's not painful and it's not blissful. It's, it's just, just like... A void. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just, but was you having some kind of, but, you, you were picking yeah, things but some, up? but something's come through, yeah. Because your brain is still, you're still, it's still on. Yeah, you're still true. You're not dead. Um, so, yeah, little things are coming through, you know, little snippets here and there. And, um, like, uh, that's why people are like, oh, yeah, you should put a radio in there. And yeah, you, know, you should, should talk consistently to talk to them because they can hear you. They so can you hear believe you. in that then? If someone's in oh, a coma, yeah, 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 talk yeah, to definitely. them every day. Definitely talk to them, talk to them because... They might not be hearing exactly what you're saying, but they're like, your face will be popping up in their dreams. And they'll be yeah. like, why am wow. I thinking of this person? Wow, I mean, this you know what I mean? just well, what you're saying random. now could be very so life-changing random. for a lot of people. That yeah, yeah, they're thinking, why? they'll be thinking, yeah, why is this person in my thoughts? Mm. So what, were like you that, getting messages you know? of, shall we turn the life support off? Did you kind of get no, that? No, I never heard that. I never heard any of that. Um, but... I, I do remember thinking something is very, very wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, something's very, very wrong. Another way of explaining it is, remember the old VHS radios where you had to dial into a radio station and you just get that like white noise? Yeah. Sh- yeah. Noise. And then if you were sh- turning the dial, all of a sudden something you hit the station in, yeah. and you hear a blip. Yeah, know, yeah, of a word or something like, or you'd hear someone's voice that you recognised, you know, whoever the radio DJ was or whatever, and you'd be like, oh, and then you'd have to go, go back, back and it's gone and try and find <laughs> it. And you're like, where? It's like that. Wow. It's like that. But most of the time, it's just static noise, you know. Um, and then every now and again, something comes through. That's what it's like being in a coma. Um, it's just black nothingness, and then every now and again, it's like, what? what? Mm. You know. Why can I hear? Why can I hear this or what? Mm-hmm. And it's totally random because you don't know what's going on outside in the real world. You're just inside your mind, you know, floating around that's crazy. Um, to your deepest, darkest thoughts, your fears, um, memories, childhood, 
trauma. Sounds a little bit like what death could be like. It could, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, it's certainly an, an out-of-body experience. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was surreal in so many ways. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go. So you tell us a little bit like, a little bit longer down the journey than once yeah. the drugs had went, yeah. uh, worn off. You was more conscious, yeah, so more now, so aware. Yeah, so I'm waking up and, yeah. and, you know, it's all becoming reality and... Was you, like, depressed at this point or...? No, I wasn't at this point. Um, I think I was... I think I was still just trying to, just trying to process everything. Um, Yeah, I think I was still trying to process everything. Um, it was it was later on, you know, the dark, dark moments come into your mind um, as to whether this is worth it or not. That all comes later. Um, you know, grieving is a so there was hard, a bit of denial at the beginning yeah, that yeah, was kind of total, keeping you safe a little bit. Denial, you just trying to put on a happy face. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, you're just trying to put on a happy face for everyone. And then it's only, yeah, further on down the line, uh, things become more, like, yeah, more more real. Um, you realise the implications of, of the injury. Um, not being able to breathe, uh, not being able to move, um, yeah, nothing functioning properly. How difficult it is having to ask constantly, um, all these sort of things, yeah. Uh, going through that whole physio program, um, which, I mean, I spent about a year in hospital in a recovery ward, and that just, that almost broke me, do you know what I mean? I was yeah. um, just lying flat on my back, staring at the roof, like just mind-numbing, and all you have to, all you can do is think about, you had nothing else to do but think. Um, you're just lying there constantly mm -hmm. thinking, you can't move, I can't move my head, I can't do anything. I'm just literally lying there, um, you know, waiting for the nurse. For once they to come in and, you know, give me a freshen up with a mm. cloth on my face, you know. Mm. Um, all these things, you, it being itchy or wanting to move or uncomfortable, oh, yeah. but not being able to move and... and just staring at the same spot for days, weeks. It, it, the, that kind of psychological torture uh, just almost broke me. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any kind of positive uh, things happening at the time? Did you get any recognition from the special forces? Was there any uh, uh, honoring um, of what you, you know? No, um, if I'm honest. Um, no, there was... Um, unfortunately, this is part of the job as well. So I'm not saying like, no, oh, boo-hoo, I want recognition. No, yeah. no. Um, special Forces are doing s such amazing stuff and they get none of the credit. Mm. Um, honestly, they, they get literally the – and that's just part of the job. You accept that. I guess you can't you, talk about you, it either. You're can not you really say? Yeah. You don't get medals. You don't get, you know, big um, parades or big – um, I don't know, newspaper articles written about you and all this. No, it's all kept in, in the shadows and, and you just get on and you do your job and you walk away at the end of it knowing that, that you won't get recognition for yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? It might, some politician might get recognition for it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. this amazing feat. You know, some yeah. hostage was rescued. Yeah. And um, because um, of the decision, thanks to the British government, yeah, you know, yeah, that sort of thing, and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, cheers, cheers. Well, these yeah. were the sorts of things I was thinking about that might have changed your perspective over, you know. No, no, it didn't, uh, because you know that you know that you know that's right. what's coming, and and you have to understand, there's a certain type of soldier that comes through into the SF world. He's not looking for recognition and things like that. It's a personal journey. He's not looking to. He's not malicious. He's not. He's none of that. He's just a normal guy. You know, probably wants just to, I don't know, just be a good man. That's it. That's it. He's not trying to be a Hollywood star. He doesn't want to be some, you know, rock star or anything like that. Um, he just 
He just wants to be happy. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. He's just trying to get by like anyone else. So when you got home, uh, yeah, wherever yeah. home was at that point, um, what was what what came next? Uh, so yeah, then, then you come right uh, to the point where I I had left the military, and I guess I was just put into the the the, the system. Uh, onto the NHS, like anyone else. And uh, I don't think they were very equipped to deal with my situation. And uh, that obviously had massive implications on my care and me and my psychological state of mind. Um, and that's when things start to go downhill pretty quick, you know. Um, these now, were you the dark now you time. realize, yeah. Now you right. realize your career's over. Mm. Um, what what can I do? What can't I do? Not much. Um, I'm not being looked after properly. I've got no funding. Um, and I hell? think there's probably one. What more the hell question. am I going to do? You know. And probably one more question that I can imagine was probably the hardest was also who am I? Yeah, and. Everything we just talked about, like why I joined the Marines, why I was doing all this in the first place, that confidence, I'd lost all of it. All of it in one fell swoop, gone. Literally the rug was pulled out from under me. The void um, came back. Sorry? The void came back. Yeah, yeah, the void came back. Still is there now to this day. Um, still there. Um, and, yeah, it just... Um, at the time, it was all consuming. Um, I, yeah, I'd f I felt like that worthless person again. I started getting into some bad habits. Um, you know, I started drinking again and um, various other things. And um, just, yeah, just the downhill spiral started um, big time. Trying to cope. Uh, yeah, just just trying to cope. Just trying to cope. Um, I was stuck in a house. Was you on your own? Yeah, on my own, staring out the window. Oh, man, it, it was uh, horrible. It was horrible. Um, and it just, yeah, it got to that head where I thought, nah, this isn't worth it anymore. Do you know, oh, I've had enough. I'm tapping out. Um, I've done a lot in my life. Um, I've been successful, um, so I'm not going to live like this. I'm not going to, you know, so undignified and so um, just, yeah, terrible. I'm not going to put myself through this. Um, so, yeah, I, looked, I started looking into assisted suicide and how I could, you know, find my, find out, find out, find the off switch. Wow, because um, is it was that because that was the right way to go about it or was it? Was it because you would physically not be able to do it yourself? I wouldn't have been physically able to do it myself. Was that even more torturous knowing that? Yeah, yeah, damn right it was. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, because yeah. I'm not even the one option. The one option you yeah, can't do. I can't do. Yeah, I've got to actually literally ask. Yeah, I've got to ask someone to, yeah, to assist me. With okay, this. so he here's where the gold is going to be come come from. Yeah, so how the fuck did you go from that? To sit in front of me now, inspiring people, writing books, film is being made about you. I don't want to spoil all the surprises that yeah, are coming, yeah, but of how the hell uh, did that switch? Uh, where did that switch come from? Where, where, where? Because if you can teach that switch, you change the world. Yeah. Or at least explain it's, it's it. Like, is it. Is it always there? Was it always there? Did I always have it? How did I find it? What did I tap into? Was it a gradual thing, a sudden thing? Um... Mm, so I got to a point where I was in a, in a, like a, a resident for, um, you know, like a psychiatric hospital and I was still working through the process of how to, um, go through assisted suicide and I was under 24 hour watch in this little room, you know, with the glass window and all that. And, um, I was on some pretty strong medication, um, and I was having to, yeah, I was basically, you know, kept away from society and. Blah, blah, blah. And Did that make things worse? Um, or was it a bit more support? 
No, I think it was what I needed at the time. Um, I just couldn't be around anyone. It was, uh, it was more painful to be around people because they were all doing stuff and they're all talking about their amazing lives and, you know, oh, I'm doing this. No, oh, I'm doing this and running around and moving and just acting normal and I couldn't do any of it or thought that I was never going to be able to do anything ever again. So yeah. I just wanted to get away. I needed to get away. And um, so that's what I did. And I was in this hospital um, and there were other people there with other psychological issues, you know, uh, schizophrenia and uh, just various other, yeah, psychological difficulties. Um, and I don't know, I, I was sitting there day in, day out, and it was actually really nice to just get away. And um, I was sitting in the courtyard and I don't know, I just thinking to myself, is, is this, is this it? Is this all it is? Um, and I think, I think for me, it just dawned on me that, well, if there is nothing, if it all doesn't make any, any, any difference, I'm just going to make the, the best of what I've got. I'm literally just going to give it everything I've got. Um, and that's kind of tapping back into you when you first started. The yeah. Rains, and then right? I started tapping back into that. And then I started thinking like, who am I and what am I? Mm. Not what I've lost, but like literally deep down, who am I? Or who could what you become, I yeah, guess? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, at that's, this point, I really wasn't thinking too far down the line. I was just thinking, who am I? <laughs> you know, yeah, who yeah. am I now? And trying to like piece together maybe some part of me that was, that couldn't be destroyed or couldn't be taken away. Mm. Um, so I, instead of thinking like, oh, I'm this physical, capable man, I was thinking emotionally and, and what do I care about and, and what makes me me, you know, and mm. I'm, I'm a passionate person. I'm a very um, caring individual and I want to I wanna make a stamp on the world in a good way. And I started thinking about these sort of things and started thinking about the positives and... And I guess others as but well. But piece by piece, it wasn't just like... You know, I didn't just wake up one morning and, you know, there was a smile on my face and I was like, yeah, I'm happy with everything. Ah, that's all good, whatever. Yeah. No, it was like literally day in, day out, I was talking to a psychiatrist or a therapist and I was, he was writing down, you know, who made me, me in like, you know, little diagrams and I was figuring out where my passions lied and, and then I was thinking, how can I still be involved and things like that. You know, and, and that slowly builds you back up just a little bit by a little bit instead of thinking, oh, I've lost everything. You know, life shit. I might as well just, you know, give up now and hide in a corner. No, I was, I went, I got help. I was talking to people. I was, you know, people were telling me, okay, think about this. Think about, you know, one good, you know, good things you've done in your life. Think about the, how much help you've had. Just small things where you've helped somebody or um, where you've been really passionate or excited about a project. Think about those things, you know, those little moments in life. So I just kept focusing on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think slowly I just started to turn a corner. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that, you know, you were trying to focus on, you know, not the things that you'd lost but what you still had and things like that. Have you gained anything through this that you don't think you would have had if this hadn't have happened? Yeah, uh, I think I've gained a lot more humility. Humility, is that the yeah. word? Um, and I think I've become far more compassionate and a lot more empathy for others. Um, whereas before, you're just living your life, you know. You don't really, I mean, if you, you do feel like you see someone in a wheelchair and you think, shit, man, that's got to be tough. Mm. Oh man, no, I, damn, that's that's not nice to see. But now it's probably yeah a lot more, you know, because I've actually lived it and I'm still living it. So you do realize it a lot more. So I've become a lot more humble, a lot more um, compassionate, and a lot more yeah sort of um, what's the word I use there? 
Did I say, yeah, compassionate, yeah. compassionate for people. Yeah. People in general uh, going through stuff. You just never know what's what they're going through. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think those are things I've learned that I don't think I would have ever learned if I just carried on with my normal life. Mm. You know? Are you grateful um, for those that, that new insight? I am because it broadens your broadens your knowledge. Um, I'd lived that life. I'd had the opportunity to see what that had given me, you know, what it's like to be a very – work in a very male testosterone and filled environment and be the top of your game, the top of excellence, the best of the best, the best in the world, um, where people, you know, automatically respect you. As you walk into a room, you don't have to say a word. I know what it's like to have that kind of confidence and use that, that, that you know – that feeling and then I know what it's like to have it all taken away and I know what it's like to be sitting in a wheelchair and people go oh yeah oh shame you know yeah shame poor oh look at that guy oh. and I know what it's like to yeah see it in their eyes and for me it's what, what is life all about it's about experiencing things you know so this is just like a, another experience I get to experience that not a lot of others get to experience mm. I guess it's a different way of looking at it. So you're, in a sense, grateful for that experience, although... A, a, in, a, in a way, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these people who are like... And this is where I get a little bit annoyed. I've met people who are like, oh, you know, if I could turn back the clock or if I had a magic wand, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't fix myself. I'm happy with who I am now. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything for the world. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Really? <laughs> If you if that's true, you're a bigger man than me. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, you know what I mean. Because I would freaking give anything to go back and not be paralyzed. Yeah, of course. But would I you would. go back and? But you said earlier you wouldn't go back and not go through the journey that you went on to get to where yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. That I love. So if, you, if someone said you can go back, but you can't go into the military in any form. Uh that's a good question again. Um, you can go back. Hmm. No one's ever asked me that before. Are there, I think... Uh, no, I would go back. I would go back, but it's hard because I'm thinking from my perspective now, going back with all the knowledge that I know now yeah. and being the man I am now, I can go back to before no. I joined the Marines. Mm. But I wouldn't be who I am today if I no. didn't go through that journey. No. So it's a very hard question. You might end up just being a nine-to-five soulless drone. Yeah, or, or going into other stuff and actually end up harming people or being just some other scumbag. Well, you might have died at 10, you know. Yeah, yeah, Just exactly. get a car crash exactly. or something. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, got pissed up and killed someone. In, in jail. Yeah. So it's, it's that's a tough question. I mean, the real answer is you just don't know. Don't you? Yeah. I've got um, another question for you that's quite deep, if you don't mind. The last one. <laughs> no, I know we've I given know. a few. No, I like the old DMCs, you know, the deep, meaningful yeah. questions or conversations. Um, they're interesting. They make you really think. Yeah. Because you mentioned something that I was um, yeah, saddened to hear that you mentioned that you, you had this void. You filled the void. You lost the void. I was kind of hoping that within this journey of – you know, coming to terms to a certain extent with what's happened and being this huge inspiration to other people and, you know, having projects going on and books and that that void would start to become fuller or full again in a different way. Of course, not the same way, but a different way. It does. But you did mention that it was still there. It's it's still there. Um, But no, it has... um I've, I've done things that I'm very proud of since my injury that have given me a great sense of pride. Good. Um, and it has filled that void, but there's a piece of me that will always be missing, you know. Want to kick doors down. And- yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was just part of my character, you know. Um, I guess the question I have then is what could you do to – Fill that void as close to physically possible. I don't. I don't think there is anything. I don't think there's anything I could do that would fill that hole. Um, but that's part of acceptance, you know. And I accept that. That'll be with me for the rest of my life. 
be, I, there'll be this piece of me that's missing. Um, and it, it hurts and it's, it's sad. It really, it does hurt a lot. Um, but that's life. You can't tell me anyone who's gone through life and hasn't lost and lived and done stuff and ups and downs and you know what I mean? It's, it's just life. It's just yeah. life. You know, some, yeah, okay, some people have it worse than others. Yeah. yeah and, and some people don't, you know. Some people win the lottery. I don't know, it's just life. Yeah. It, just, it carries on. And the world will carry on tomorrow, whether you like it or not, you know. Um, the world keeps spinning. Sun rises, sun sets. Yeah. That's just the... Do, do you mind me sharing a perspective, although it's an incredibly naive one, obviously not knowing anything about your situation or how you feel? Yeah, of course. You said there's a piece missing. Uh, a perspective could be that it's just a piece that finished because, you know, imagine an, an old boy that retired from the military uh, because he was got old, Yeah. right? You, you know, he, he could probably sit there in his armchair and feel like I did what I did, what I, did what I wanted to do with my life and did, did, don't, don't necessarily feel like a piece is missing, but it just felt like that chapter came to an end. Yeah, you know. Is there a way of looking at it like, do you know what? You did what you were meant to do and that piece is there mm -hmm. and always will be there. Mm -hmm. The ability to recreate it might not be there, but there's not necessarily a missing piece, just a conclusion. Yeah, a conclusion. A, yeah. a, a finished puzzle. Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I spoke to a therapist who kind of was talking similar to what you're saying there. He was like, you know, that... That Toby perhaps did die that day, mm. you know, and the piece that's missing inside you is you grieve for that Toby. You mm. are, because, and let's face it, you were reborn as a different person and you had to find a new you and a new person and a new, you know, whole new way of life. Yeah. Um, and maybe that that isn't a whole. Maybe it's just you grieve that, for that Toby yeah. who potentially in on a on some level did die that day. You know, I can see that. I can see that, but I can also see it as that Toby's still there. She doesn't do that stuff anymore. Yeah, and you do something yeah. different now. Yeah, I, I think yeah. There's maybe it's a bit of both. There's pieces of that Toby that still exist in me. Like there is this rebellious, you know, annoyed little shit um, <laughs> who wants to, you know, push the boundaries and push every, you know, everyone who says no just because he can. That I believe is, is always still going to be in me no matter what. Yeah. Um, and I love that. I love that about me that I've always been this cheeky kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right, you know. Um, yeah, and then there's this this person now who's a lot more mature and has seen things from a total different perspective and, and lived life and has a few more wrinkles and is a bit more, I don't know, wise to the world. Um, and hopefully you can put those two together and hopefully some way you find peace at some point. Mm. You know, somewhere along the journey you find peace. Um, I don't know if I ever will. I don't know if I ever will. I've been through so much highs, lows, um, and they keep coming. Don't, it, it's never smooth sailing. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, it is hard. It is hard. Every day is hard. It's hard to get up every day and keep going and keep going because this is a big part of me that wants to just give up every mm. day and just be like, I can't be asked. I can't be asked anymore. I really can't. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got to just somehow every day I like, get over that, put it away, put it away, you know, because I don't want to let those demons out. You know? um, so I just crack on, just keep cracking on, just keep going, keep going, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and what will be will be, you know. Um, the famous saying, when you're going through hell, what, what can you do? You just keep going. You just keep going. You can't stop. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. You just freaking keep going and see see where you end up. Yeah. Um, and 
I've done a lot since my injury. Um, and I think that's also worth talking about. Yeah, can we hear some of those uh, things? So, you know, I went back to school. Amazing. I, um, I redid my education. I knew that um, I still have my brain. Um, Most important piece, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, muscle, like anything else, it's a muscle. You need to use it. Um, so I went back to school, um, redid my A-levels, went to university, did a business degree, um, did very well. Um, yeah, uh, I've started my own company. I'm a businessman, entrepreneur. Um, I've traveled. Uh, people still think that's amazing. Oh, you, how do you get on an airplane and how do you, do, you know, mm. how do you get around the world? I'm like, well, you just got to make it happen. You know what I mean? Mm. It's pretty undignified and I'm not going to lie. Like airlines just do not prepare themselves for people of your level of injury to come onto an airplane. They just don't. Um, but you've just got to crack on and, um, yeah, just get through it uh, because I like travel. I like experiencing the world. Yeah. Um, I like seeing different cultures and different foods and mm. meeting new people. It's, um, it's part of life. It's part of the journey. Um, and, yeah, like I said, I've started my own company. It's called Bravery, by the way. Just uh, oh, yeah, plug it as much as you can. What, yeah. what is it plug that it, it plug does? Plug it. So it's an extreme sports brand. It's basically like a Red Bull but without the Red Bull. Okay. If that makes sense, um, without the drink. Okay. Red Bull without the drink. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's all about extreme sports but what it's about is empowering people and it's about – you know, pulling out that inner bravery to just keep going no matter what. I love it. That's why I think that part of you, it. It, it, it's not missing. It's not yeah, gone. Yeah, it it's not it greed. It's, 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 not, it's living elsewhere. It's through it's, others. It's, well, that's what it it's is. in the and, universe. And I know? wanted to create this company because that's really what I wanted to do was just, uh, yeah, maybe he's not gone or maybe I'm doing it in honor of that person. I don't know, but... It's out of your body and it's into yeah. the world now. Yeah, it's in the it's out there now and it's in the world and it's about yeah people who just love doing gnarly shit because they want to live life to the full. Yeah, you know, they want to maximize their life and sure there's risk, there's risk in anything you do, um, but it's about being brave and it's about taking the taking the, the leap of faith. You know, mm. and what better way to show that by these guys who you know doing extreme sports and dirt bikes, and motocross and surfing these you know big monster waves and stuff like mm. that it's it just is it is there, this is, that, this is that another, feeling it's another interesting question this will be the last one because you mentioned bravery there and taking risks i wonder if um you have an element you, of pride of the the injury do you, are you able to tap into that yes yes there is there um pride Oof. um yeah yeah there is i think I think there is a bit of pride there that the reason, yeah. And you I took, took one I for took the team, risk, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, took a bullet. I took a risk. I took yeah. one for the team. It's like the ultimate, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you would call, but it's the... Sacrifice. Yeah. yeah um, it's what I you're mean, trained uh, to do. It was what needed. I was trained to do. I always knew there was a risk of it happening. It's almost like you, you no went risk. down with honour but kept yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No risk, no reward. Okay. Um so I guess, yeah, I am proud of that, I suppose. Um, usually when people ask me about pride and about things like that, I always say, no, I'm not, a, I'm not proud. I'm not a, I'm just, I'm just me. Yeah. But I suppose in a way, yeah, there is a little bit of like, well, at least I gave it a shot. Yeah. You know, at least I gave it my best. I gave it my all. Um, you know, how many people don't? How many people just live their entire life and just never take a chance? Never take a risk. Yeah. One know. thing I have noticed throughout this conversation, and I feel like it's it's definitely strengthened throughout, is um, and, and from the interviews I've watched of you, is um, is there is a reluctance I I, I hear to accept um, and acknowledge a lot of the, the 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 good that you've done and the things that are impressive and the the pride that you have around yourself. Um, I wonder if acknowledging that more could help f fill that void. Because uh, you know when you know when it was like, for example, it's like, yeah, I did these cool things. You know. Yeah, I, I, 
the one guess thing I'm I, proud. I, it's weird because when you're on a podcast or when you're on any sort of telly or talking about yourself, the last thing I would want to do is come across arrogant or pig-headed or big-headed yeah. or whatever. Well, I can promise it's, you, it's not. not. It's not me at all. I hate it. Especially and in comparison to me, you're going <laughs> to... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so arrogant. Uh, you know, no, you're, you're, you're going to no, be... No, no, it's like... Cause, no, I, I just wouldn't... I don't want to do... I don't want to be like that. But, I don't but know. being able to acknowledge your, you know, the things that you're proud of about yourself, the accomplishments you've had, you know, the amazing person you have, all these things don't make you arrogant. You know, they just fill you up inside and they will fill that void. Arrogant is, you know, when you're putting yourself above other people and, you know, yeah, it's yeah, a difference. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes the fear of being arrogant will stop people from, you know, filling themselves up on the inside. Yeah, true, so it's true, yeah, yeah. You're not arrogant. You, know, you need to have confidence and there's a fine line there. Confidence, self-love. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, self-love, arrogance, there's a fine line and I know what you're talking about. It's about confidence and self-love, not arrogance. Yeah. Because you're not arrogant. And filling that hole no, no, no. inside you. And I think a lot of the things I've done are purely trying to fill that void. And it just hasn't, it hasn't hit the Well, it's mark. because they're outside, you know. Yeah. We, it's often that we try and fill uh, an internal uh, void with yeah, yeah. some external yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And no, I've, I've done a lot of that. A lot yeah, of that. Yeah, of course. And so have I. Just uh, trying to... And it does help. I mean, it, I the businesses, the, making an impact, it helps. But ultimately, it's down to giving yourself everything that's available to you. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, I think that could be the key. No, you, you probably, yeah. You probably, yeah, I can see you've, you've really thought about this a lot. And yeah. I've done a lot of these podcasts and I've spoken to a lot of people who... They ask me these questions, but they don't really know what they're talking about. Mm. They don't really know why they're asking me these questions. But I can see you've really thought about it. Um, and you've tapped into some things that I haven't thought about for a long time. <laughs> a long, long time. And it's been almost refreshing. Do you know what I mean? I appreciate you know I mean? that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, I mean, I appreciate it because I, I think I've forgotten Forgotten those things. I get so wrapped up in my life. Um, sometimes I forget that. Yeah. Know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's something to remind myself of. Definitely. Well, my hope is that you do find that internal void and fill that void. And I know it's possible. Yeah. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't share your 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 what you say your confidence on that one. I don't know if it'll ever be filled. Um, Sometimes but, the some, knows, life is long. Sometimes the belief that it can't be filled is the thing stopping you from finding the thing that will make it be full. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I do feel like it holds me back, but um, but I can understand. Life how is long, you know. Is. Um, yeah. I don't know what's around the corner. Who knows? In ten years' time, we might meet each other, and I'll be like, "Mate, do you know what? You're totally right." Yeah, uh, you know, you know. I'm not, I'm not preaching because I'm, no, you know, it's not about, a no, I don't know it's anything not. about this your situation. I can only, no. I can only get what you share. Yeah, but also, I've, I've, I've got voids. That I'm looking to fill. I'm, I'm not this perfect person that's fulfilled and happy in every sense of the word. But um, yeah, I, I, I relate a lot, which is why I yeah, could speak from that experience and you know ask and that, those questions. Yeah, I picked up on that definitely. Yeah. Definitely picked up on that, and that's why it's been a, it's been a really good conversation, actually. Um, do you know what I mean? Some of these can be so dry and so, I don't know, uh, practiced and rehearsed and, and mm. just going through the motions. And just going straight to the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, know, what's it like story. being an SF soldier? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, this and this and this, and you're like, mm, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's been good. It's been really good. Glad you... I've enjoyed it, but it's been an absolute pleasure. And look, I am so grateful that you've, you know, taken the time, yeah. not just the time, the effort to come physically oh, to meet me. That's, honestly, that's not It's a, a huge, a huge thing. I and wanted to. I really wanted to. Don't know, like, how difficult it is, but, yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to come, and uh, it's good to be here. And you will have inspired a lot, a lot of people uh, and, so. and changed a lot of lives. Yeah, I hope so, and... and I mean, I hope, I hope people do take something from it. 
it's unquestionable. Um, I hope people do. F- yeah, I really do. So just quickly, your book, yes. if people want to read it, mm-hmm. what's it called? Where can they get it? So my autobiography is called Never Will I Die, and it's yeah. written by myself. Tony that's the same Dutch. thing on your jumper I got yeah, there. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually a strap line for my company, Bravery, um, which you can find on Instagram, bravery underscore UK, which, um, yeah, like I said, it's all about just doing gnarly shit and getting out there and, um, yeah, living your life to the max. Awesome. Um, but yeah, the book, Never Will I Die, you can get on Amazon. Um, most places online will sell it, but Amazon is always going to be your quickest and easiest way. Um, and if people want to get in contact with you, social people, media, website? Yeah, social media. So my social media handles, Toby Gutridge underscore official. That's my personal social media. Um, and like I said, Bravery's Instagram handle is bravery underscore UK. Uh, and if anyone actually wants to go further and check out the website, please check it out. Um, it's www.bravery.co.uk. Um, and you can buy anything from That's any, a good domain, that. What's that? It's a good domain you've got. Yeah, there. yeah. Don't ask me how. Uh, um, it was, a, yeah, it was luck. Uh, really? Luck, yeah, luck. <laughs> God, um, it's worth yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, the person <laughs> that had it before me was very generous. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so. Wow. Amazing. Hey, well, guys, get yourself yeah. over to bravery.co.uk. Toby, it's been an absolute pleasure. Appreciate Thank it. you for being Thanks, on uh, Adversities to Assets. Appreciate it.